So, yeah. um, so speaking of this kind of crazy world and COVID, um, I was recently, it's brought to my attention about these slaughterhouses that we have in New York City and this term wet markets. I hadn't even heard about the wet markets, which is obviously yeah. the genesis of, of the, what we think is the genesis of COVID in, in Wuhan. And, and then I learned that you'd been very involved. So tell us more about that. Tell, I'd love to hear about your background, your passion for you know animals and right, 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 your right, involvement right. has come across in these wet markets, what you've been doing. So, so I, I've been an animal lover forever, and uh, I've talked about it a lot in interviews over the years, and PETA got in touch with me many years ago, and uh, it was a match made in heaven. So I've been working with them a great deal. Uh, it, can, it can get a little daunting um, to hear of all the things they're working on, and it's a very fine balance between just being uh, um, mortified by the things I learn about insofar as uh, treatment of animals by humans and uh, you know I'm wanting to know more about it only so that I can help so anyway it's it's uh, I'd love to be able to keep a distance and just say stop it but unfortunately I've had to I've had to get more involved you know learn about the nuts and bolts of what's going on yeah. why do you think I mean you know when in what we're experiencing with with COVID um, Clearly, there seems to be a catalyst now, you know, very timely to say, look, should we be having these very open live markets in the middle of a city with a dense population? What do you think? And, and I know they're making great strides at the moment with with closing, you know, with, with closing some of these down and um, both at the kind of the city level, also at the state level. What do you think is making it so hard? Why do we still have these? Is it is it cultural? Is it you know what what's the pushback? You know, I, I, I don't, don't know, know for sure. sure. It's basically habit. I think it was started years ago, and people will always say in regard to these things, my father did it, my my his father before him. It's just uh, history and uh, <clears throat> culture, ritual, and you know, uh, like with the the horse drawn carriages, which is another issue that I struggle with um you know trying to explain to these guys that it's not okay anymore and it just it really does not register because it is all they've ever known it's all they've ever done and you know i i often relate it to um you know once we couldn't pretend we didn't know what tobacco was doing to people anymore once it became obvious if you smoke you you know you have a much greater risk of dying of Heart, uh, of uh, lung disease and heart disease and all the diseases and tobacco farmers i'm sure were not thrilled i can't it's all i've ever done all i've ever change is hard yeah. change is hard it's as simple as that and that uh once we learn more as a species we have to change according to our knowledge um the treatment of animals as if they are ours to do with as we please um you know as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it might be the downfall of our civilization. It's, it uh, it um, presupposes that that somehow they are not uh, worthy of of the life that they were given. Um, so anyway, I, it's uh, it's a many fangled problem, and I, the way PETA works, which I quite respect, is they they go little by little. They, they got to chip away at it piece by piece, and they have tremendous patience, far more than I do. Right. 